Yep, unfortunately it really did. And we lost thousands in product and materials and parts. Pretty much everything that's sitting on the floor was either damaged or is no longer usable. We're gonna walk you through what happened, how it happened, what we're doing to fix it, and obviously a lot has changed, so we'll get you a full shop update. Bunch of riprap coming in, this stuff here. That is going to be part of the solution. I think we got one more truck coming today still. Actually, that's an inch and a half. I'll show you what that's for here in a minute. done well let's go inside and talk about what happened here i do want to say before we get too far part of this is partially my fault because i did not hire an actual engineer to come out and deal with this hillside and watershed so i'm taking responsibility for that that being said it's been an absolute blessing working with summertown metals i obviously let them know what was happening and they immediately said we're on it we're going to come out we're going to make it right we're going to fix it so that's that's been just wonderful there they've been so good to work with through this entire process so unfortunately i was out of town when this happened and jessica was here by herself trying to take photographs and call the insurance company and push water out of here and try to move parts and pieces you can see it's just a mess right now some of the stuff she couldn't move it was just physically too heavy uh, I just I feel so bad for her she did what she could but let me kind of show you the aftermath here so you can see this mud this whole floor had up to about a quarter inch of mud and water either actively flowing across or sitting in here all the way across the back wall here and Obviously, water coming into your building is a huge concern, not only because you're trying to keep stuff dry inside, but when you have water flowing over your beams and your woodwork and everything else, you're just creating rot in the future if you don't get it handled right away. And what we were left with is a lot of this, because most of this stuff was in cardboard boxes. And I'm not very organized, and obviously I have power tools that were on the floor that got soaked. We have rugs and boxes and boxes of parts and things that absorbed moisture that are just shot. All this stuff in here, plus I'll show you more. This is some of my interior material we were able to keep, but a lot of this was in boxes, actually fairly organized. Well, all of this material absorbs water, right? And we threw away I don't even know how much of that. We're trying to save some of the metal stuff that isn't completely rusted, but the boxes got all wet. You can see the mud underneath the car that we haven't fully swept yet. Behind here, that mud on the floor, it just flowed underneath all of the cabinets and everything. More mud here, so we haven't finished cleaning yet we're just kind of organizing and pulling everything out from the walls figuring out what was damaged what's savable what can't be replaced and it's been just a daunting process all the cardboard is just you know shot so the drain tile that was put in didn't necessarily fail in fact it did what it was supposed to do it shot the water out from the gutters and scooted it around the building and snipped it down the hill but it should have been in a better drainage system itself to also catch watershed from the hill and move that around and that's 
that's the part that failed and I'll show you what we got going on now. So to kind of understand this, we got to start all the way at the top. So this kind of makes sense. Behind here, I got about, there's almost 60 acres back here and it's all a hillside. And that is kind of the cone or the top. All that water comes down this hill, this way, this way, and obviously that way and this way and that way. But what I'm saying is there's a lot of water that comes down this hill. Well, previously that water would just come barreling down, come right down this hill and surprise, there's my shop. Let me see if I could find a spot with less vegetation here. Here we go. And you can see, look what the water did. It pushed all these rocks down. These used to be up here. And you can see the water travel. So all this water just went right in, right across the slab. So now on this top side here, we dug a channel. It's anywhere from a foot and a half to two feet deep because it's graded to flow either direction. And then we put this class A riprap in here. So the water doesn't carry that away, obviously. And that's gonna maneuver a majority of the water coming off the hill around the building right away. So that's this guy here. So it's, like I say, a good foot and a half deep under this, sloped in like a trough. And the hope is the water coming down from the hillside here. I also need to get some vegetation in here, reseed this. This is from hauling the dirt when we remove the hill side because remember all this was a hill all the way across all that dirt was taken out so this was all the trucking from that but this goes all the way around either side of the building it's kind of like a u-shape so that troughs out this way and goes off into a different part of the property over here down like this so that's a huge huge part of the resolution we might have maybe sort of been okay had we just had that in the beginning and originally I wanted to put basins up there with some drain tile but you know life is busy just didn't get to it didn't happen one of the biggest differences is this is actually corrugated drain tiles. This has holes in it. The old pipe or tube didn't. The old tile was solid. So all it was doing was transferring the water from the gutters. Well, this will allow the water that's coming down the hillside to soak into this as well. This is also graded, laying an inch and a half. It's going to be covered an inch and a half, and then it's going to get riprap over top of that as well. So it'll naturally filter, hopefully, a lot of the mud and stuff like that so this doesn't get clogged up. But it'll help keep the ground from flooding and pooling back here, which was one of the bigger issues we had when Jessica sent me photos. It was a complete lake back here. Water would come back. There's what it'll look like when it's done. Water would come back here and splash up against the tin and sit. Well, it's not gonna go this way into, you know, chert rock and clay that's been here for 119 or billion years. It's gonna find its way through the sill across the concrete. This was widened and brought back. And then the company that's out here this time is putting in the actual fittings. Before they were just pressed together and leaking and it wasn't really, wasn't really moving the water very correctly. But this is gonna be the end result. They're gonna come back in and smooth all this in, obviously. But this goes all the way across the back of the building. And then it's gonna come around this way. And since they were doing this anyway, they brought this hillside back. They had to, to get the equipment in here. And so they brought this back a little bit, and I thought, well, since the guy's doing that, 
can a guy just take it a few more feet, you know, since you're doing it any hoose, and let's get some inch and a half in here, then a guy can get the old Winnebago. Let's sneak that Winnebago in here and park it up. So that's what, that's what this is doing here. This drain is still gonna come out in daylight right out here. Same as before, it's just, you know, that different pipe, like the guy was, like I was just saying, I was telling you that. It's coming out here now. Over here, this is one of the original drains that was put in. That's gonna be fine because it's not soaking in any water. This is just, well, it actually sneaks over, catches that gutter, which is the center. So this one's gonna be fine. We're gonna leave that one be. I just got some landscaping to clean up. This right here is the conduit that runs straight in. There's gonna be an emergency shutoff button up there. This will eventually be a 500 gallon fuel tank in the ground with a old school fuel pump right here with new internals from a new pump. Something I've always wanted to do and I think we can pull that off in a cheap fashion. I've actually got some of you subscribers helping with engineering of said fuel pumpage thing here but here's the building fellers it looks beautiful came out just the way i had hoped here's how that awning turned out just what i had envisioned we don't have lights out here yet we're waiting we're kind of shopping on like amazon or walmart kind of find something cheap here we got to get a door light same as the other side we're kind of just shopping there and this is that wainscot we talked about you know different rocks and bricks and stuff like that and this is what we settled on because the colors kind of blend you know with the building so hey squeaky what are you doing what are you doing you catch any mises today still have exterior lighting to do at some point i'm just you know letting the checkbook cool down we got outlet uh, coming out between each door here i also have doors these need to be replaced they threw these up to get it sealed in and it's hard to tell but these two doors are not the same as that door maybe i could show you on the inside outlet there nice outlet here guys always got dead batteries you gotta have a place to plug a lot of them in gonna have an RV outlet here for the Winnebago you know so when family comes I get a boop there you go good luck and here same switches as the other side kind of the same setup this is garage control here did go with I don't know what they're called topper upper side mounts and they're all the my cukes so they hook into your digital phones and all of that. But anyway, see that panel's white. These two are kind of beige. Or wait, no, I think it was this one needs replaced to match. And then I'm going to be replacing those two so they all match. Because it's driving me bonkers. And I've already sold those and got a good price for them. Over here, we're going to have, I don't know, coffee table. TV, uh, this is all gonna be for security cameras. We've got like 12 more cameras we're putting in. This will be for, there'll be a kitchenette here with the fridge, life safety generator stuff. This is gonna be the storm shelter right here. And then we've got outlets. These are dedicated circuits for the lifts that are gonna be coming down. Love this natural light from these windows. Those were so cheap. Those are like the cheapy Menards. You know, they're like 96 bucks or whatever, and they turned out fantastic. You don't really need to run the lights over here, to be honest, if you're just coming over to grab something or something like that. And I'll show you the service for all the new electric now. Again, sorry about the mess in here, guys. We're, you know, panic mode cleaning and mopping and We've just been filming back to back. It's been crazy. The old digital panel was here. So we discoed that and repoed it. 
but we kept all the original conduits because we're going to be putting in a small rack here for security stuff, a server, uh, NVR, switches, things like that. So that'll be right here. All that service got moved over here. So this is the new service. Big dog. So now we won't be popping breakers every 20 seconds. And these guys did a fantastic job. Got a trough in here. Look at the pipe work. That's just, they really took their time. Made it look nice. That all runs down and feeds that side. Almost finished with the electrical. We still got some stuff here and there to do. Mainly the fans. Having a hard time finding fans that aren't so darned expensive, fellas. Goodness gracious. I'd like to get, obviously, a few more down over there. And then I want to replace these because they're shot. But... They ain't cheap. If you know of a black fan that's affordable, commercial grade, bleep bloop it down there. Tell me where to find the thing and then I'll, I'll look at it, you know? Welding equipment used to be there. Now that's moved over here. So we've got dedicated 220 and 110 for all the welding machines. And I finally got my tire machines set back up. We're finally getting back to where I was in Wisconsin, Minnesota. We've got dedicated outlet for the changer. And one here for the balancer, plus air, everything like that. So this is kind of the tire center. And then down over here, this is compressors. So we've got a 110 drill press, stuff like that. Um, just got this plumb back in, 220 for this. That was a mistake. Don't forget to shut your compressors off, fellas. You blow a line or something, this is going to run all night. Belt's going to turn into flames, burn your shop down. My bad. Also drain it every night if you can. I still need to plumb air. I'd like to have a spool, you know, there, here, here, probably, you know, one or two down here. This is going to be more for storing cars down here and kind of just hanging out and having lunch and stuff like that and dinner. Uh, we tried to do that on the other side, but it just it gets convoluted and messy. So this will just be storage, lifts, sit down, can a guy put his feet up? And then this side over here is gonna be more of the, can we try to fix something and do the thing, the stuff, you know, over here. Now with this whole process, we also had to redo the hill we made over there because we, if you remember, we accidentally made Rusty Acres Lake. <laughs> that was a, that uh, was a mess. Well, we had a uh, pipe dug in over there. It was leaking, the hill was sinking, and it wasn't draining properly. So that's also being redone over there. So let's go jump in the golf cart, ride over there, and take a look at what's going on there. <sighs> Yamahoo. Yamahoo again. Right away. Good old rig. Needs a little work, but you know, it works good. It's been over a hundred. It's been like 105, 108. So a lot of this is dried up. But normally we had water just, well, you can look at the grass, I guess. It just never went away. It just sat down here, swallowed up a bunch of my rigs. So we're redoing this as well. So here's the old pipe. We upgraded. There's the new pipe. So we're putting 18 inch in now. Yep, there goes the backus. And the whole thing is it's got to get set up correctly right here. This side of the pipe was too high and nothing was actually, you know, flowing into it. This all needs to be graded differently. And of course, it'll come across. Don't get too close, bud. Down through here. Unfortunately, snagged my internets. See that down there? Yeah, that's my interwaves. 
So they're coming today to repair that. And uh, which means power is probably only a foot deeper somewhere is about here. But you can see it's deeper because it actually has grade in it now to come across and flow out this way. Or at least that's the, that's the plan, you know what I mean? They should have this buttoned up today. Phone people are supposed to be out this morning. They'll do a weather seal junction box under there. Get that taken care of. It's just stranded pair. And we'll lay this in, probably a little bit of gravel around that. Lay this in, then we'll cut it with the chainsaw. And then I gotta get some topsoil in here so I can start seeding the old grass. Garage door and cellar's here. It's amazing how fast he gets these in. It goes real quick. This one's already down. He's putting the new panels in there. And we'll be replacing this one as well because it's got like the horizontal slats in it. I don't know what you call them. Also got new seamless gutters on all the way down. It was actually cheaper to do a new seamless one piece and then try to cobble in because remember it ended right here before and then they'd have to re-slant all of this again so essentially take it down and then put it back up and then make couplings and stuff like that and the guy was like this is just run a new piece off. The machine's really cool that does that. It's just on a big roll like a foot wide and just feeds it through and bends it up and then we got a downspout here this corner dumps right off into there and then we got one more downspout over here this is that pipe used to be electrical but we're gonna convert all of this into low voltage for switches and cameras and network and stuff like that and then this is the new Rip wrap on the bottom. So basically it goes around both sides, right? The other side goes out into that field. And then on top, it goes around both sides as well. You can kind of get an idea how deep it is in there. I think this is gonna absolutely solve our issues. Again, I thought about putting basins in back here originally, but I think they'd just probably get so full of stuff what it really needs is a retaining wall, but maybe someday we're going to continue to stack tires and things like that back here for now. So it's nice to be able to just to drive the tractor in or do whatever we have to do. I'm going to get the hand shovel out, smooth some of this off a little bit. The rain will probably take care of the rest. And then I got some trash up here. I got to drive to pick up up there and grab. It's coming along great. The side is also done. So here's this side. Before I remember it was just inch and a half gravel. Here's the old drain. I need to cut that off and bury it. It's already just full of stuff any hoose. That came under the concrete so we didn't want to be tugging on it. The new drain, the bigger one, now runs more this way with a little bit more grade on it. But look how far back this hill came for a parking pad here gotta do some sweeping and pull some weeds and stuff like that but that's where a guy can scooch up to Winnebago looks pretty good and then that rip wrap continues out right here all the way down here I got to recede all of this because this is a our hay field over here and uh, the construction process really walloped on her but I'll probably just go ahead and seed all this in mow on this side and hay that side but the end of it's buried right here that's the end of the line so that's pretty much it for the the dirt work around here around the shop anyway let's go take a look at the rusty acres pond and see how that turned out here's the new outlet here looking much better that rock will keep that culvert from getting washed out Looks like he came through and picked up a lot of rock for me too. Yeah, this looks much better. Much, much better. And here's the inlet side. Yeah, looking good. Same story here. I can 
smooth this out just a little bit more. See, it's got to have like a eight inch rise probably just to get to there. I, don't, I want to avoid that. So I got to kind of bowl it in here a little bit, but overall much, much better coming along. There's all the new doors in now, all matching. Looking good. Gonna be another beautiful sunset in Tennessee. Shop's getting close. Gotta get this outdoor lighting figured out pretty soon here. Today's a big day in the barn because we're finally getting color on the floor. That's right, we're getting some epoxy floor coating put in. After this is dried and done, we can start actually moving in and I can get some elbow room. So I actually missed it. I was out of town doing a revival, but they've already been here and cleaned all of this acid etched it everything like that prepping it you can see i already dropped a bunch of oil here and who but that's what it's for i guess so they've got it all cleaned and prepped right now and they're going to be putting color down here shortly it's going to look so much better it takes about three to four days to dry there is one really tricky part here trying to match this color floor to the old color floor and i'm told you know, they're gonna do their best, but they're not gonna be able to get it exact. The other issue is there used to be a wall here, obviously. So the epoxy flowed and built up a big ridge there. And without actually doing any concrete grinding or anything like that, it's gonna be a little bit rough. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's where our post was. This is gonna be a pretty big lip, unfortunately. And then we're gonna have an edge all the way down. I've requested the new color to go to this line so we can at least get you know these caps taken care of and stuff but i guess it's just something i'm gonna have to live with rather than pay a bunch of money to have someone come out here and concrete grind all of this smooth maybe sometime in the future uh that's unsure if i really like this floor coating and it holds up which is going to be different than that system i may end up just doing this side but i have a tremendous amount of stuff to move to make that happen so I'd rather just get moved in over here, get the lifts moved, get the shelter built, figure out our area, get some vehicles over here, work on this a little bit, let it age and see what happens. This is more of a, not so commercially, that, that was some fancy floor coating that didn't work out. This is made by Rust-Oleum on this side and it's significantly cheaper. It's gonna save a bunch of money, but guys are mixing up the, color in the chips now and get her going these guys are flying over here so there's the color it's similar but it's got uh, black white and then like a dark brown chip in it so it's more of a traditional floor coating if you will this is that edge I mean it's not great but it's what we got you know it's a barn it's, it's not a showroom but now that this is getting done, it's gonna dry in a few days. I get that storm shelter put in, and then the plan is to move the two post, or excuse me, the two car, four car, I don't know, there's cars, down there, and then bring the single one down as well, get some cars in here that need to be in here, and then I can finally get my nuts and bolts set up put in over here I've been fighting that for years now running into town I mean I'll literally spend 45 minutes going to town to get bags of hardware or miscellaneous this and that and it's just costing way too much money so I'm gonna get a nut and bolt set up kind of a rig outfit in there which is gonna also be spectacular and then we're working on HVAC right now I think I got a plan there we can do it in an affordable way put some units outside thought about mini splits but I need a bunch of them and I need way more insulation so we're gonna try something a little bit different but the key to all of that is getting this floor done and dry and I'm really looking forward to it Ugh, gonna climb Billy goat oh this is gonna be fun weed whacking 75 million miles of fence with a residential weed whacker that's that's great getting the fences painted today they're going black i gotta get all the grass so you know looks like this otherwise we're just wasting the money they're gonna stain all this up so i gotta get all this whipped out of there weed whipper weed whacker i don't know ran out of string gotta walk 19 
0.4211 million miles back to the shop. Get some more. Finally made it up to the shop and then Diamond Rio, our beloved golf cart, is down. It ran out of fuel and I think the diaphragm got dry. It wasn't pump laden. So what I do is take the fuel inlet line off the fuel make it happener, give her a little bit of backwards, and then I ran it and uh, it was pumping fuel. So plugged that back in, cleaned this out, had some moisture in it, buttoned it all up. Now, oh yeah, we got a runner. Yeah, see, this is looking a lot better. It's kind of a southern thing. Midwest, northeast, it's white fence, but down south it's black fence like this. And not only does it protect the wood, but it looks nice. Just a standard three panel horse fence. Well, the floor is finally done. Officially finished, and it looks fantastic. I wished I would have done this chipped epoxy on the other side. I did smooth epoxy. I didn't know how the chip would do with jacks and stuff like that, but being as this side's gonna be more for storage, you know, again, we're gonna have the lifts over here, the four car lift, two car lift, uh, probably just cars parked over here. We'll have that storm shelter and then kind of a sitting area with a little kitchenette. There's not gonna be a lot of heavy, you know, toolage over here. That's all gonna be done, you know, down in that corner, I'm gonna leave that side kind of the same, but we're nearing the end. We are almost finished with the building process. Looking pretty good. Kind of an overall view here from the side door. Well, there is your update on the Vice Grip Garage headquarters, the pole barn expansion there. It's coming along pretty good. I'm happy with the progress. Everything's been going pretty darn smooth with the exception of the flooding here, but I think it forced us to do it correctly in a sense. So that's all right. Sometimes the guys just got to do it twice, you know? Stay tuned, there's still a ton left. All the final electrical, potentially HVAC. We've got floor coatings, we've got the tornado storm shelter, we've got all the way down to the little kitchenette and stuff like that. Plenty more to come. Thanks guys for watching, appreciate it very much. We'll see you next time.